Hi everyone, Cindy Curran here from the Spiritually Charged Life, a YouTube channel for spiritual awakening and personal growth and development. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today's topic is going from grief to peace. And how that came about was I lost my cat very suddenly, long story short. Uh, he was playing, I was watching him play, a he was playing with my other cat, Bindi. Um, a chair fell on him, the leg went over his neck in such a way that um, it crushed his windpipe and he basically suffocated to death before I can get him to the vet. I was devastated. I, I was kept screaming, no, no, no. I actually did a, a YouTube video about that. It's called uh, Dealing With Trauma, where I go more into depth. And I did that video a couple of days after that happened. So I'm pretty teary-eyed. It's not for the faint of heart, probably. I have my ugly cry face on. Um, it, it was absolutely devastating to me and I also lost a, a dear cousin his name is John and John was 28 years old he was sick and he let that sickness go for a week because he thought he would get better and he wasn't getting better so finally his family convinced him to go to the emergency room and they thought that, you know, that he had the flu. That's what it seemed like he had the flu. So he gets into the emergency room and the doctors tell him, there's nothing we can do for you. This is um, going to take your life. And um, they told him had he got in the hospital earlier on the onset, they would have been able to do something for him but he had some kind of ammonia it was the same thing that jim henson died who was the creator of the muppets and he had this kind of ammonia and what happened was because he waited a week it filled his lungs and there was absolutely nothing they can do i think it was like a, a few hours a day or so later he um slept in a coma and he passed on so the grief of his mom especially and his brothers and aunt and stepfather um, is beyond um, beyond comprehension. I know what I did lose in my cat, how shocking it was. I kept screaming, no, no, no. I was screaming so loud because he basically died in front of me. And my neighbors called the cops. The cops called an ambulance. I was hyperventilating. It was, it was pretty ugly. So what I learned was, one, I had to accept that my cat died. I couldn't accept it. Everybody that came in the house, the cops, there was like four cops. I asked each every, every one of them to check the cat. Um, the pound came because they were going to take him, but I wanted to get him to the vet and um, have him properly uh, cremated. And, and I didn't want to just bury him out in the yard. I was afraid some wild animal might come and dig him up and, and it's only woods out there and it's very rude. Oh, it's a long story. I won't bore you with it. But anyway, so it was a pretty ugly scene. So I had to let go of the absence. In the case of my family with John, you know, certainly their lives were totally disrupted and it is a whole different way of living and they have to accept that. They, they haven't got there yet and, and the grieving process takes time. Everybody does it on their own time, of course. But one thing that I learned was one, to accept that it happened, even though my brain didn't want to believe it, even though I watched him die in front of me, it was just so sudden and just so shocking. So I learned that, um, that when people focus on something or someone that they don't have and they know they can't have it, it makes them feel worse. And the more we focus on the absence of who we don't have, the worse we feel and we're caught on this, this wheel, this dilemma of wanting something we don't have and wanting it. And it, it just doesn't work. So what we want to do is reach for the next best feeling thought. For my cat, the thing that I had to concentrate on, and there's no particular order, and sometimes it would go back and forth, I had to tell myself, because it was a part of me that was feeling really um, like a failure to his life. I'm responsible for his life, and I, I failed him in, in my eyes in, in that moment when I was watching him die. And um, it was very hard, but the next feeling thought was, 
I was glad I was there. I was actually away. Um, my father was in the hospital and I was taking care of my mom who has Alzheimer's and I stayed overnight and I had just come home the day before and um, had I come home to a dead cat on underneath a chair not knowing how long he was there um that i i wasn't there how long he suffered how long he lived you know that would have been really playing a lot on my brain so i was glad that i was at least home i was glad i wasn't sitting in the chair and i was responsible thank god for that um i was glad that um he did die suddenly and he didn't he didn't suffer he didn't suffer for for long and there were other things that i would feel glad for um and it would go back and forth sometimes um feeling best that better my next feeling mess yeah my next good feeling thought one day might be that i i was there but the next maybe hour later or days later that wasn't my next best feeling thought the next best feeling thought was that he didn't uh, suffer long and I just built on that whatever grief that I was feeling I just kept reaching for that next um, best feeling thought and you know it's, it's a tough thing to do and like I said everybody you know has their own way and um, there's many different ways but I want to tell you a story of Viktor Frankl, for those who don't know. And it sounds like I'm getting off the subject, but I promise I'll, I'll bring it back to this. Um, I have lipstick on the corner of my mouth. So it's like, oh no. But anyway, sorry. Um, Viktor Frankl was, in, was a Jew in the concentration camps. He lost his family. He was uh, newly married. In fact, his wife was pregnant. And um, everybody knows um what happened with the jews and hitler and stuff so he's in the concentration camp he's separated from his family completely and he's really missing his pregnant wife and you know he was saying they take everything from you they take your clothes they take your family they take all your possessions they tattoo you uh they even shave your body they shave your brows your hair even um everywhere if you have hair on your body they shave it off the only thing the only possession he had was his body he had nothing else he watched people die he didn't know from day to day whether he was going Going to live or die or not just day to day moment to moment at any moment his life his life could have been uh, snuffed out he watched people being beaten he was also beaten so the concentrate he was starved uh, he just had rags for clothes he had no um, he had no nothing he had basically was stripped of any kind of human dignity he had absolutely nothing and he wrote this book and it's called man search for meaning and it's amazing an amazing book on how he survived mentally he actually after he got out of the concentration camp he um he actually became a psychologist a very uh, famous psychologist and i really highly recommend this book a man search for feeling but in this book he writes this excerpt he's in the concentration camp he's being marched i think it was early early morning um into like labor which was very hard labor he had um uh, it was cold it was damp he um i think he had or people around him had sores on their feet because their shoes either they didn't have shoes or they had holes in their shoes so they're 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 raw their skin is raw they're in physical pain emotional pain every kind of pain you can imagine these people were in including victor frankel and he said the people that give up are the ones that die so he never gave up he held on to the next best feeling thought and that next best feeling thought thought for him was the memory of his beloved pregnant wife who actually uh did not make it she she i think he found out after he got out that uh, she didn't make it but in his book he writes this he, he's now he's marching in this with sores on his feet and he's in all this physical emotional mental spiritual pain 
And when he goes back to camp, he, he writes this and he puts this in his book. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many pro... Yeah, I'm sorry. This is what happens when you do things live. You make mistakes. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaiming as the final wisdom by so many thinkers, the truth that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart the salvation of man is through love and in love i understand how a man who has nothing left in this world may still know bliss be it only for a brief moment in the contemplation of his beloved and that's and that's what franco found comforting finding that was his next best feeling thought after having nothing not even knowing if he's going to live from moment to moment it was of his his beloved wife and being with her and he held he held on to that and eventually the same thing happens with grief the thing that i concentrated on i go for the next best feeling thought and the thing that I concentrated on was, you know, uh, I certainly loved Lucky Charm. I spoiled the heck out of him. Uh, I had some good times, you know, the love in my heart for him. And I was very fortunate because people were very supportive. I thought that, you know, my cat died. People aren't going to understand because some people think, just get another cat, you know. And it's like, it's not the same. It's not my lucky charm, you know. And he was beautiful. Had the biggest yellow eyes and he was long, black, shiny fur. He was just, he was just an absolute love. And it's kind of lonely without him, even though I have others. Um, well, he was my talker. He was the one that greeted me at the door, you know. And I hold on to those those memories very dear so uh so anyway that's it for now you know and and this grief doesn't even have to be about if somebody dies it can be something in your life i uh one of the things that i'm suffering right now is is financial hardship as i have a 15 year old cat he he needs medical attention it's kind of sucking my money but um so i concentrate not on the loss of the money i had concentrated he needs surgery he's going to have it next month so i concentrate i have that money for the surgery i look around my house and next feeling thought i have loved ones i have friends i concentrate on the next best feeling thought on what I do have what I treasure what I am grateful for having you know and if you have to do a, a gratitude journal that was very popular back in the 90s I don't know if, if it's still popular today but you know keep a gratitude journey keep your focus on the good that you had with this beloved who knows why um People go so suddenly, or, or pets, or whatever happen. Why things happen, but um, but keep your focus. Go on the next best feeling thoughts, and that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I um, if you would like to see more videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And if, when I do a new video, it will show up in your mailbox. Also, right beside to the right. I don't know if it's the left. I don't know on the camera which side is which. But um, if you're facing the computer to the left, there's a big red square that says subscribe. And right next to the square is, it, or actually it's a rectangle, right next to, it looks like a bell. It's like a black bell. If you click on that, you can click either or or both of them. If you click on that, when I do a video, you get a notification on your computer that I have uh, done a, a video has just been posted. So you can always do that too and that's it for today thank you so much for joining i i hope this video helps somebody if you know anybody who can benefit for from it uh please share it with him with them and that would be great and if you have any comments or feedback 
comments or feedback um, please leave them below if there's a video that you would like to see if there's a topic a spiritual topic law of attraction more on getting over grief for the afterlife reincarnation anything leave that comment below and I will do a video about that and uh, that's it May you live long and prosper. May peace, love, happiness surround you now and all your years, years through. Thank you so much. Bye now.